As you know from making your own money decisions, sometimes your emotions and the way you think about money get in your way and make you your own worst enemy. Gary Belsky joins us today. He's the co-author of the book, Why Smart People Make Big Money Mistakes and How to Correct Them. Gary happens to be an old friend of mine and a really smart guy, so pay attention. Gary, nice to have you. Thanks. Good to be here. One of the uh, smart things you can do, you say, in, in the book is to, uh, to buy index funds rather than invest in a mutual fund that tries to beat the market or try to pick stocks yourself. Why is that a good idea? It's funny, and you and I have been talking about this for 20 years, right? Because index funds are really, for most people, absolutely the way to go. Warren Buffett has said that. Some of the smartest money managers, money managers in the world have said that, but people have a hard time getting over the idea that they just will do as well as the average, when in fact, the average, because of fees and things like that, ends up being better than average. And so by just simply being in the market, spreading your money around in a, in a diversified portfolio, you, and if you do it consistently and contribute over time, over five or 10 or 15 or 20 years, you will have a lot more money than lots of people who try to time the market or find the absolute best money manager because good luck to you in finding that and being able to predict into the future how well someone will do. Okay, good. One of the advantages of index funds, uh, in addition to the low fees, is the diversification. Exactly. Why is that important? A perfect example of why diversification is important. I write books about uh, finance and money decisions, and yet when the markets fall, I sometimes get a little bit anxious because this money matters to me and because I want to have as much of it in the future as I can. Well, because I'm diversified, because I have a certain amount of money in real estate and because I have a certain amount of money in cash, when the markets fall and then I check my own accounts, I realize, oh, I haven't done as badly. And that calms me down and prevents me from doing anything irrational or knee-jerk. It's not just that I want to participate in lots of different markets mm -hmm. and in lots of mm -hmm. different investments. It's that I want to keep myself from overreacting. So whenever the markets fall and I check my uh, portfolio, I always feel a little bit better and a little bit calmer. There are, you know, very complicated um, financial arguments, mathematical arguments you can make in favor of diversification, but just this psychological idea that you can always look at your portfolio and go, oh, I was smart to have that. It's, it's so interesting because a lot of the behavioral economic principles and the guys who invented this field, one of whom just won the Nobel Prize, the, a lot of these principles are embedded in our folklore and in our adages and in our stories. So for example, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. that, is, that phrase exists in almost every culture and almost every language. There's a reason. It seems trite and it seems cliched, but it will make the world a difference in terms of keeping you on a steady course of contributing money to long-term savings and not touching it. Uh, another piece of advice is to max out on your retirement plan. Why is that so hard for people? I think it's hard for people because even though they're saving the money themselves, one of the bedrock principles of behavioral economics is called loss aversion. And loss aversion basically says that we treat the loss of a given amount of money about twice as strongly as we treat the gain of it. So what happens is even though we're saving this money and we're going to get to spend it later on, we experience taking it out of our paycheck as a, as a big loss. I'm not going to be able to spend this kind of money. And so what happens is people generally don't take as much out as they should long term because they feel like it's going to be missing. But what I always do is explain to them two things. One is you won't notice it about two or three weeks after you start taking it out. And I, I made a bet with my sister once in which I basically said to her, you take a, start taking out an extra $50 a, a week from your paycheck. If in a month you have noticed it, I'll give you back that money and then you can go back to your old system. That was about 20 years ago. She has about $112,000 more now than she did back then. The other thing I like to tell people is that in not contributing as much as you can to your 401k plan, you're giving away free money. Because still, today, even in this difficult economic times, many, many companies, the overwhelming majority, I think, still, give matching dollars to 401k contributions, right? And so in not participating and not maxing out, you're missing out on free money that somebody else is giving you. Good, good. Well, that's good advice. Gary, thanks Thank for you. coming in. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.